Good morning, friend. Welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are heading out to the garden today. I haven't been out into the garden in over a week. We've been out of town. We just got back from Montana. We got back Saturday afternoon, evening-ish. I made myself unpack, do all the laundry, and then yesterday I had to do computer work all day. And today is Monday, and I wanted to wait to go out to the garden with you because I wanted to see what everything is looking like with me being gone for a week and a half. We had a house sitter and I said, welcome to anything that's fresh out in the garden that's gonna go bad. They let me know yesterday that the plums are ripe. She was eating some of the plums, so I'm excited to go out into the orchard and see what that looks like. I'm excited. I did go into the grow room and look and see what's happening in the grow room because I needed to water the plants and I started a few more things. It is early, Josh and the baby are still in bed. Josh is off to work, so it's just me and the baby all day. So I wanna get up and get out there early so we can see what is happening out in the garden. I have been waiting for this and I can't wait. So I'm bringing some baskets. Oh, I also need to grab some scissors because I'm hoping there's things to be harvested. I can see from here that there's a bunch of flowers that are ready. So I wanna at least get a bouquet. I'm bringing two baskets. I'm bringing a colander to put the herbs in in case they need to be washed. A couple little containers just to see if there's something little that needs to be harvested. And let's just see what it looks like after over a week of no care in the garden. Before we head out to the garden, let's look at what the grow room is looking like. And I'm gonna grab a post-it and a pen so that I can jot down any of the things that need to be done, whether that's harvesting, weeding, planting, <laughs> and just kind of come up with a list of what I need to do this week. Over here, we have our seedlings that we started a couple weeks ago. This is our cabbage. And we had fantastic germination on this. I think I had 100% germination on here. The soil is getting a little bit moldy, so I'm not gonna water them for a little bit. I think they got just a little bit too much water, but that's okay. I think that they will bounce back. So we are gonna be planting these outside after we harvest our potatoes. And then up here, we have a little bit poorer germination. This is broccoli. We got two four, five of them to germinate out of all of these soil blocks. And then over here we have the cauliflower and we didn't have the best germination on this either. So what I did yesterday is I came back here and I started a bunch more cauliflower, a different seed packet. I think these seeds I had had for three years. So I grabbed a different seed packet and then I planted a ton of bok broccoli rob. So hopefully these will do better and they will germinate and we will have a good germination so we can so we can plant those out this coming fall. The first thing I'm noticing out here is that the nasturtiums in this green stock are done. So this week I'm going to rip out all of these plants and replant them. The seeds are dropping so I want to harvest the seeds and then hopefully I can save those seeds and we can plant them next year. This green stalk looks fantastic. Those petunias I think are gonna go all summer long. My two bean green stalks have just gone crazy. There is a ton that needs to be harvested on here. Now I planted a bunch of different varieties of beans on here and I don't know what is what anymore. So I think these are jade green beans here at the top. And then I have pinto beans in here and cannellini beans. And so what I think I'm gonna do, because I don't know what everything is, I was thinking about this when I was out of town. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let everything go to seed on here. I'm just gonna let it grow, produce seed. And then once the seeds are produced, I'm gonna be able to differentiate between what is what because the seeds look different. I'm gonna harvest these and this, these are going to be seed that I will plant next year and I will do a better job knowing what is what. But I think this, these green stalks are absolutely beautiful and I think it's gonna be fun to try to use them as 
seed production this year. So I'm just letting them go. A couple of the plants are pole beans. That's why they look absolutely crazy because the vining has just gone out of control, but that's okay. It's kind of fun. I did fertilize them right before we left. I was having some yellowing issues. Here you can see some of the older leaves. These are the newer leaves and they're deep green and rich. I mean, look at this, absolutely beautiful. So the fertilizing did its job. It's not even seven yet this morning and it is perfect out here right now. I just, I cannot wait. It just watered, so everything is, oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so happy to be out here with you this morning. First thing, I can see a ton of tomatoes that need to be picked. And it looks like the salad, this is all romaine. This all needs to be pulled out. So this will go on the list of something I am gonna do in the next day or two. It looks like the pepper plant started to produce some more peppers, so I'm gonna harvest these today. They're pretty small, but they're starting to turn color so I can harvest them. These are the King Arthur. I think I'm having better luck with the King of the North. This one's getting a little bit sun, well, still nice and firm, so I'm gonna harvest all those. In here, these are the black bean plants. They were having some issues, and I fertilized them before we left, and they're starting to bounce back. I just got a glance over here in the corner of my eye and we have a massive zucchini and tucked in here we have a cucumber do you see that I let my house sitter eat as much fresh produce as she wanted and it looks like we have enough for Josh and I plus them to enjoy all the goodies while I was gone our sunflower Steve Van Gogh sunflowers have all put heads on so that is really encouraging I was hoping that they would be open by the time I got home but I didn't want to miss them blooming so I think this is going to be perfect timing in the next day or so we are going to oh my goodness <laughs> this is incredible and just keep looking there's one here and right there needless to say we have enough zucchini it is going to be a good zucchini year last year was terrible so this year the garden is making up for it now over here oh my goodness we have quite a few snow peas but some of them are looking a little bit mature let's see if these are still sweet they might be kind of bitter these ones are going to be great for harvesting but the the snow peas are kind of coming toward the end of their season Mm. totally perfect and still edible we did not miss out on that oh my goodness okay so these are the black beans before we get to what i just got excited about they're looking fantastic i was so worried about these black beans because they looked awful when they first germinated but we put a little bit of fertilizer on them and they are looking great and look at all these pods we have on here you see all that so all these pods are gonna have a ton of black beans in them and then there's still so many flowers and all these purple flowers are gonna turn into black bean pods I am pretty convinced that we have a year's worth of black beans here this is absolutely incredible now here we have some potatoes. I think these potatoes, I'm gonna give them maybe a couple more weeks, maybe two weeks before I harvest them. Normally, you want them to die back quite a bit before you harvest them, and I think I'm gonna do that. This is a big weed here. We're gonna go ahead and pull that. And this zinnia here got really stunted from the potatoes, but I harvested the potatoes that were right next to it. That's what I've been doing with some of the weeds. I just throw it into the field back there. When I left, this zinnia plant looked really sad and stunted, but now that I harvested this one potato plant right here, it's starting to bounce back. This is a queen lime lime zinnia. I think I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this, but I'm not going to bring it inside because it's almost done. 
I'm just gonna let that compost there. But these next ones will be perfect for harvest to bring inside. And this zinnia plant is starting to look a lot better too now that it has some more space. These potatoes are dying, which is exactly what we want. And that not, is not good. I've never seen aphids on potatoes before. So I'm gonna have to come out here with some soapy water and spray that off. In my garden, I've never struggled with Japanese beetles or really squash bugs. Aphids and slugs are kind of my two big pests that I really have to deal with. And for aphids, I have found just soapy water, spray it on, take a hose, spray them off, and that works really well. And this is making me happy. We have another sunflower Steve here that is about to open. So, oh my goodness, friend, this is incredible. Not only do we have some really beautiful white zucchinis, but our Cinderella pumpkins. No, no, these are not Cinderella pumpkins. These are fairy tale pumpkins are looking beautiful. These were, I don't know, the size of a ping pong ball when we left. Look at how big they are. I love the shape. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. <gasps> We've got, this is new. This was pollinated while I was gone. This was not here. I'm not sure what kind of pumpkin that is. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, friend, holy cow. This thing is huge. Do you see how big this thing is? Oh my goodness, it's tripled in size <gasps> since I was here last. It looks so good. And the zinnias up here, up top, are just exploding. We have another Cinderella pumpkin here. This is the pumpkin we pollinated together. And then it looks like we've got another female that is opening here. So let me see if I can find a male flower. From here, it looks like we have another fairy tale pumpkin right there. And that's the only pumpkin I see on this side of the bed. You can see a little bit better here. We have our zinnias that are blooming on top. And I think I spoke a little too soon because look what I just found right there. That's another fairy tale pumpkin. And here we have a massive squash and the zinnias are just exploding this was exactly what I wanted this bed to look like from there I can see in here a ton of red which means we oh my goodness look at this celery the celery looks beautiful I didn't think the celery was going to do anything because a ton of it died. We've got a ton of tomatoes in here. These are the Roma tomatoes. Tons of red. This is the indeterminate variety of tomato that just decided to go crazy on us. I on accident planted that one here. My plan was to come out here and harvest. I'm stepping over the squash plants as I went through the garden, but I'm getting too distracted with all this beauty and productivity that I wasn't sure if it was gonna be here. You know, you never know what's gonna happen when you leave your garden for over a week. Yes, this lettuce definitely needs to go.
I'm harvesting these peppers even though they're so little because they've already started to change colors, which means they're done growing, now they're maturing. So I'm gonna get these off the plant so hopefully they'll set more flowers and fruit. I do think that this lettuce is getting in the way of the plants, starting to shade it out. So today or tomorrow, I'm gonna pull all that lettuce out. I'm gonna taste this cilantro here because some of it's flowering and some of it's not, so I wanna see how it tastes. That's still really, really good. So I'm gonna harvest the cilantro and I'm gonna try to leave behind the flowering cilantro. If it's flowered, like here, that means it's trying to produce seed, which can make the leaves bitter. So I won't harvest this one for the leaves. I'm just going through and trying to pull out the plants that have flowered and so that when I go to actually harvest this and snip them, I can just snip along the bottom and I can get a bunch of it at one time and we're only getting the nice, sweet, delicious cilantro. And of course there's a weed. Kind of have a blackberry problem, a lot of blackberries in this garden. So I constantly am pulling them as I see them when they're little and easy to pull out. with me when we got ready to leave the homestead you knew that I didn't go gro grocery shopping the week before we left because I wanted to use produce that was in my house and I didn't want a bunch of stuff in my refrigerator to go bad so we didn't have very much stuff in the refrigerator and I still have not gone grocery shopping since I've been back the last two days I made egg roll in a bowl and a random stir fry with veggies that I had harvested right before we left and I see tacos in our future tonight with all the cilantro, tomatoes, and onions. And, cause I'm sure, well, I don't know if there's onions yet, but tomatoes and peppers and cilantro, I bet there's an onion we could harvest. I just took a peek over in the other bed where I have the rest of my cilantro and something I learned very interesting this year and this is how I learned to garden is just by trial and error is that where I placed my cilantro in this bed was ideal. I can see over in my other bed where I placed the cilantro all of it has gone to seed and I'm not gonna be able to harvest any of it so I was able to harvest all of this sweet delicious cilantro because of the place that I planted it. Because over there, it gets way more sun and it's a lot warmer and it caused it to bolt. I even have some more right here I can harvest. And I'm curious to see if after harvesting it today, if I'll be able to get one more harvest. That is pretty incredible. This entire container is full of cilantro and zucchini and we're not even done harvesting the zucchini yet. This here is the Golden Glory zucchini, and this one is beautiful. The skin looks soft and tender, but this is how they've been coming out of the garden. This one I'll give to the chickens. The skin is like super hard and firm and not tender. So I don't know if it's something that I'm doing, why some of them are coming in like this. If there's, I don't know. This one looks tender and yummy to eat. This one, not so much. And you can kind of see that in here. Those really dark orange Golden Glory zucchinis, 
those are gonna go end up going to the chickens. This one looks tender. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest it just because we have so much that the small zucchini will be fine. Oh, <laughs> I forgot these were in here. no flowers in the house right now so harvesting a bouquet is of the utmost importance we just harvested the zucchini bed so let's go back to this tomato bed where we were looking at the Roma tomatoes because there's a lot in here that need to be harvested and there's something that looks like it might be ready to harvest but it's hard to tell till I get in here so not quite yet so we harp we planted a bunch of jade green beans around the Roma tomatoes. So where the cages are, are where the Roma tomatoes are. And then around it are jade green beans and they're pretty little yet. So we will give them another week or so and we will be harvesting, or not a week, probably a day or two. And we'll be harvesting these. I have another area for, mm. Right before we left, my jade green beans were ready to harvest. They're over in that last bed over there, and I'm worried that they're gonna be overripe now, but when we get over there, we'll, we'll see. But for now, these Roma tomatoes are perfectly ripe and ready. So here I'm grabbing the Roma tomatoes. A couple of them aren't 100% ripe, but I'm just pulling them anyway, and I can let them finish ripening inside, and some of them are absolutely perfect. Now, my house sitter was able to harvest stuff the whole time I was gone, so we end up harvesting a massive harvest today. A ton of things. And so this is exactly my dream come true. Uh, garden that can produce plenty for Josh and I, plus enough to share, plus enough to preserve. This is my dream come true. But here I am harvesting these zinnias. Some of them are a little bit too far gone to bring inside because they won't have much vase life. But I want to encourage these zinnia plants to produce more and more blooms. So I'm just harvesting almost all of them on here. And what that's going to do is encourage these zinnia plants to produce more flowers so this was my goal with this bed was to have the pumpkins just vine out like crazy and then have all the zinnias pop up and it's working beautifully sometimes oh and then here we had already harvested a bunch of squash out of this bed and i found a couple more massive ones this is an italian long squash and so i go through and I grab anything and everything I can find in here and then later I find more. It is incredible how productive this squash is. I really like this zucchini. It's probably my new favorite because if you do harvest it when it's young, the seeds inside are really small. They're really firm and look at this thing. This thing is growing up underneath the lip and this took a little bit of coaxing on my part to get this squash out of here so i harvested all of this and then later in the day i end up finding a few more on these plants this is crazy these two grew in a week because i harvested every zucchini off this plant when i left so from this bed we just harvested this bed i want to show you this bed this is where the cilantro is so this is the bed right here that 
I was talking about the cilantro that bolted. So this cilantro is planted on the south side of the bed. So it gets a lot more sun than over here. That's where we harvested the cilantro on the north side of that bed. And you can see it is all gone to flower. So it's gonna be bitter. So I can do a couple things with this. I could let this go to flower and harvest the seed for coriander, or I could give it to the chickens. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but I know that planting it on the north side of the bed is a good thing to do for a longer harvest. Now in here we planted pinto beans from there over and the first set I planted only one, two, three, four of them germinated out of probably 40 plants. So I came back and I planted a second succession. I think my seed was bad because it doesn't look like any of the second planting I did germinated. So that's a little disappointing, but it is what it is. Over here, the carrots are looking really good we planted. The sunflowers are looking great. Now these jade green beans, same company. I got these both, those pinto beans and these beans seeds from Azure. And these ones are looking fantastic. We had a great germination. It doesn't look like there's any beans or flowers on these plants yet, but it won't be long. I've got a couple red cabbages that actually, this one looks like I could harvest it. These ones still, oh, this one looks ready. And that one looks ready. We harvested all the green cabbage a couple, maybe three weeks ago, and we ate some of that green cabbage for dinner last night. It's in the fridge. It is not staying as fresh. I mean, it's still totally fine, but it looks like I need to probably do something with the rest of it because it will go bad if we don't either eat it really quickly or if I don't preserve it. So, but it was perfectly good. We had egg roll in a bowl last night for dinner and it was delicious. Now this bed, I'm seeing some peppers. My peppers are definitely struggling in the fact that the plants just are not that beautiful, but they're producing more peppers than I've ever grown in my past gardening history. So I'm considering it a win. Some of these tomatoes look like they need to be trellised up. I did all that before I left, but it is growing season. Now this is a right here, a kale plant that volunteered itself in there and it's completely smothered out a pepper plant. So there's a pepper plant right there. I just kind of let the kale do its thing. Maybe I'll harvest a bunch of this and give it to the chickens. That's what I'm gonna do. Lots of peppers. I think I'm gonna let those grow. This one's changed colors. I have never got this many peppers this early in the season. Even though, I mean, look at this plant. It is not a thriving plant. It's producing though, so that is what matters, I guess. this is free food for the chickens and there's some aphids on it which is even better because that means they're going to get a little bit of protein that gives that area a lot more space i don't think this pepper plant is really going to come back from being smothered but we just got a bunch of free food for the chickens and we have a ton of green tomatoes on these tomato plants, but nothing that's quite ready to harvest yet at this point. But it looks like there's stuff that's ready in this bed over here. Now this is a cabbage plant that was a volunteer as well, Chinese cabbage, and I was letting it go to flower. I'm considering pulling it out, but I'm also considering leaving it for the pollinators. But in this bed, there are a ton of things that are ready for harvest. See, this cabbage is kind of smothering this pepper plant a little bit. 
along with this cabbage and the tomatoes that are ready to harvest, I'm noticing that there are a ton of red jalapenos that need to be harvested. So I will get all of these off the plant. These are the smallest jalapenos ever. And in here we have cannellini, green, uh, cannellini beans and they're starting to set some beans, which is exciting, but lots of red peppers. It's a lot. <laughs> So this is what we got out of half of the garden. All of this stuff is gonna be just fine until later tomorrow. I'll probably start processing a bunch of it tomorrow. I'm just gonna keep it at room temperature because we are going to head out to the garden this evening. It is about 15 minutes before Josh needs to head to work. My neighbor started mowing and it's getting hot out there. So what I'm gonna do is get this cilantro washed and in the freezer so that I can freeze dry this. There's enough fresh cilantro that probably for dinner tonight when I make some pico de gallo, I will just grab the fresh cilantro. I'm gonna get these flowers in a vase and everything else is just gonna sit here. I'm gonna hang out with the baby, I'm gonna do computer work. And then when Josh gets home from work, we'll head back out there and finish harvesting and seeing how the garden is looking. When I went to go put the kale for the chickens, I saw a couple things that are really exciting, but I tried not to look too much. I tried to keep blinders on. I'm really excited to take a closer look at the corn, I saw that it's probably taller than me now, but I haven't taken a close look at it. And I glanced at my Atlantic giant pumpkin and it's getting pretty big. So I'm gonna get this in water and I will see you back this evening. Josh just got home from work and we get to head back out into the garden, finish what we started. I've got a new basket and I emptied our container so we can fill this up. And what came in the mail, I wanna show you what came in the mail today. I'm really excited about it. I actually started some more seeds with the baby in the carrier because I couldn't help myself. I buy a lot of my seeds from MI Gardener and he was having a 50% off sale. I can link him down below. I do have a discount code for you, but he was trying to get rid of this year's seed in order to prepare for next year's seed. So I took advantage of the sale and I bought this golden bantam corn. I bought this because this is a sweet corn. It matures very quickly. And when I get out there, I'll show you the corn is looking really good. So I think I may have figured out a way to grow sweet corn on the homestead. So I bought a ton of these. I got two, four, six, eight, ten, I think like 10 or 12 packs. I got some blue lake bush beans, some butternut squash, and three drying flowers. I got two more straw flowers, vintage white and purple. I have these out in the garden. I can show you what they look like. I got some apricot status. What I want to do with these is I want to cut them, have them dry because these dry beautifully, and then I'm going to braid them in my garlic braids if I'm able to harvest soft neck garlic for 2024 and braid in some really beautiful flowers. So that's my goal for those. More dwarf white cosmos. These are some of my favorite flowers. I will show you them out there in the garden. Some pink rose snapdragons. I grew these last year. Absolutely beautiful. I want to grow a bunch more this year and some rose aster. I also bought some bunching onions and I just planted them today. I just put some Vermont compost in the bottom of this 
sprinkled the seed over the top and then put some more compost and watered it in. And from what I showed you this morning to just right now, look at all this broccoli that has sprouted. Not one of these had sprouted earlier today when we were out here and now we've got a ton of broccoli, which is pretty incredible. This is two days worth of growth right there. So that's all I did today was start those other than hang out with the baby and do computer work. But now that Josh is home, we get to head back out into the garden. This is where we worked this morning. We got these 10 beds looked at and harvested. So now we're gonna head to this bed here. From this bed, the only thing that were harvestable were those tomatoes I just harvested, but we have a ton, and I mean a ton of really large fruit tomatoes that are going to be ready shortly and so we're just going to let those hang out on the vine and harvest it, them when they're ready. We've got some cannellini beans in here that are putting on fruit not ready to harvest yet. More pepper plants, kale. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with that last kale plant on this one. I'm going to harvest it back heavily, give it to the chickens. We have some onions here that I'm going to harvest some of the greens this week. From here on out, you're gonna see a ton of onions and some of them are starting to size up, which I'm excited about because I was worried that they weren't going to. Oh, the baby and I did take a little walk through here. I wasn't going to, but we needed to get out of the house. We did a little walk through. I didn't look at everything, but I did see some things that are really exciting. And I see a few things that are a little disappointing. So we'll get to them as we get to them. But one thing that is exciting is the green onions or the onions are starting to grow. I'm gonna make some more onion top pesto this week. So. I'm not gonna harvest it today. The day I harvest is the day I'm gonna make the pesto, but some of the onions are starting to bulb up, which is really encouraging. So let's go from this bed down to this bed. This bed has some parsley, I need to harvest that. And then we did a second round of zinnias and they're starting to grow. They've got some really good size on them. We planted carrots that are starting to grow and they look really good. We've got red cabbage that's not quite ready. It might not really do much because of the heat We've got some green cabbage that's ready. And then where I harvested some green cabbage, it's just kind of been composting in place. That cabbage doesn't look so great. It'll probably end up going to the chickens. And then here we've got some red cabbage that is starting to form some heads. So we'll see what happens here. But we've got green onions in here that are looking really good. Or these are bulbing onions, but the greens are looking really good. And then from this bed, Let's head down to here. We have a ton of snow peas still that I need to come out and harvest. I mean, there are so many on here. I'm worried that these might be a little bitter. Let's give these a try. These ones look great still. Those would be really sweet. I have a huge bag of snow peas. Those are fantastic still. So there's hundreds and hundreds of snow peas on these plants. If you can see them in here, I'm going to come through tomorrow morning, I think, and get all those snow peas. But down here, I'm going to go ahead and collect these. We've got some hot peppers here. Those three pepper plants were pepper plants that I purchased at Home Depot. Down here, We've got a bunch of basil. So when I make onion top pesto with some onion greens, I'm also gonna make some basil pesto and I'll come out here and harvest that tomorrow probably or the next day when I do that. There are a couple different things that are planted in here which I don't see anything yet to harvest. I've got cucumber plants here. I don't see any cucumbers ready to harvest, but I do need to take these plants and have them go this way. But I am seeing some baby cucumbers on here. One thing that's crazy that I saw earlier is I did a second succession of zucchini. I planted this zucchini about a month or so after I planted that zucchini up there and they are already starting to produce fruit. Those plants I started indoors, I planted them out. These ones I direct sowed and they're producing really quickly. I also planted a bunch of cucumbers in here, right here but those cucumbers are not ready to harvest yet either. But we've got a bunch of basil that I will get. Some of this basil went to flower, so that's probably just gonna be for bouquets. 
But here is the straw flower that I just purchased more seed from. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. That's that purple color. And this is the vintage white color. So from this bed here, we've got a potato bed down here. Nothing's yet ready to harvest down here on this potato bed, but it's coming along just fine. The potatoes are starting to flower, which is a good sign. That means that those potatoes are starting to grow the tubers in the ground and the tubers are starting to grow, which is fantastic. Now this bed here, <laughs> There's some exciting stuff happening in it. Our onions are growing amongst the carrots. The carrots are starting to grow really well. It's kind of looking a little bit like a jungle, which I'm totally okay with. These sunflowers are starting to get really tall. They're probably a good three feet tall. And then this vining pumpkin, I don't know what it is, but it has a ton of fruit on it. So I think you can see there's three right there. One, two, three. There's one up here. Let's see where to go, right here. I think that is some sort of, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's some sort of a pumpkin, some sort of winter squash. These are our dwarf white cosmos. I love them. They are probably, like I said, one of my new favorite flowers. And these are the dwarf version, so I can't imagine what the entire large version would be. But the pollinators love them. There's about four bees on here right now, which is exactly what I want to see. On the opposite side of this bed where the sunflowers are, we have one more winter squash. And it is a butternut squash. I, for some reason, thought I didn't plant any. And I am so excited to see some butternut squash growing. But the real deal accomplishment so far in this garden is this bed right here. When I walked out here with the baby, I noticed, you see that right there? That is corn and that is corn that is tasseling. So we just might get a corn harvest this year out of these corn. There's nothing to harvest yet, but that right there is a great sign. And there's one more right there that's starting to tassel. And I think I just saw this one is starting to tassel. So that is super exciting. One thing I am noticing though with this corn is it's starting to yellow down at the bottom. So I don't know if that's a bad thing or not. The pinto beans that are grow, oh look. Okay, so this is new. That is a pinto bean I planted down here. The pinto beans are looking fantastic, but I don't know if maybe there's something wrong with the corn, why it's yellowing down here. I've never had my corn look this good before. So I don't know if that's just the nature of this variety of corn. That's the nature of growing corn. I don't know. I'm just excited it looks like this because I have never seen my corn look anything like this. Now this right here is something that's a little disappointing. I noticed when I came out here with the baby earlier today. Here I have two more of the Cinderella, not Cinderella, these are the fairy tale pumpkins. And this one was pollinated and then something happened to it or it didn't fully get pollinated and that fell off. But this one over here I know was fully pollinated because it was growing really well. And look at that, it just is rotting right on the vine. So I don't see any more flowers or fruit flowers on this. So we'll just see if it ends up putting more fruit on it or not. From this bed where we've got the corn, up here I noticed that we've got one cool thing, I've never grown melons before, and we've got a little tiny melon on this plant. So this is not ready to harvest. This is called an early moonbeam melon. And there's another little baby one there, so we'll see if anything happens with that. Not much else happening in this bed other than the vines are growing. This vine is not supposed to be going that way though. I am trying to train the vines to grow out the bed the way on the side they're planted. So these vines should be growing this way towards me, not away from me. So I'm just gonna work on training them this way. So this one should be growing. They like to grow the opposite way they're supposed to. This one should be growing this way. Oh my goodness! Look at what I just found. So I just found, I think this is a Jardel pumpkin and it's all interweaved in one of my melons. So I'm gonna try to untangle it. But here's the Jardel pumpkin right here. 
So that looks a lot better with the melons and the pumpkins growing the proper way. Now over here, well, let's go to this bed first. This bed, I'm not gonna harvest anything on it yet. It has a few peppers that are almost ready, but I want to make stuffed poblano peppers and fry them. And so I'm gonna let those grow a little bit bigger and we will make that together for dinner one night. I've got some massive tomatoes. Oh my goodness, look at that. Huge, not quite ready to harvest yet though. Some blushing ones, that's ready. Let's go ahead and grab this pepper though. Before we go to the next bed, I wanna show you the Chinese five color peppers. You can see they started out purple and then they turn red and then they turn yellow and then they turn beige and then they turn orange. So you can start to see, or maybe not. So maybe they go purple, yellow, no, purple, beige, yellow, orange, red. I think that's the order actually, but they're really beautiful and I'm gonna harvest them when they're red. We were just up in that bed right there and I wanted to come down to this bed because we've got a couple things we need to harvest out of this bed and it's in the shade. So I thought it'd be a little bit more enjoyable to be down here. There is something in this bed that I did not know that I had in this bed. Sometimes there are perks of not labeling things because I thought I had only planted one of these mini pumpkin varieties and I guess I've got two. Now this one, when I first looked at it, I thought it was gonna be another baby boo. But if you follow this plant up here, there's the vine that goes up here. I'm gonna to try to move the vine if I can without breaking it. See if I can kind of redirect this plant. That's the thing when you're not here for a week, things kind of decide to do what they wanna do. And there you can see this is a mini yellow pumpkin or orange pumpkin. So I don't remember the name of this variety, but I'm excited that I'm possibly gonna have some white mini pumpkins to decorate this fall with and some orange ones. So let's get that plant going that way. This bed has more of our onions in it and carrots. So some of these onion tops I'm gonna harvest this week, but <laughs> I've got another one of these white long zucchinis. And look, it's ridiculous. I think these just might be the most prolific zucchini I've ever grown. It's called a long white zucchini. There's another one. This is one week's worth of growth. These long white zucchinis are out of control. <laughs> they are so big. One week and three days worth of growth. And we got all those massive zucchinis. Now I'm looking at this bed right here across from me. I believe this variety is an Italian striped zucchini. And to think I was worried about whether I was gonna get a zucchini harvest. To be fair, I got hardly any zucchini last year, but this year is a bumper crop of zucchini. Now, this is something I'm really excited about. We're in the same bed that we just harvested those Italian zucchinis from. This right here is one of my favorite winter squash. It is a sweet meat pumpkin, and it's growing in this bed beautifully. And I've got one there, and then I have one down here that looks like it was just pollinated. So hopefully that's gonna grow. The rest of the bed is a little bit of a flop. So here we have radishes that have gone to seed. I'm gonna collect this seed and I'm gonna try to not purchase any more radish seeds. We don't eat a ton of radishes, so this should be enough seed to get us through if I harvest it. 
That's not the flop. What's the flop is the middle part of this bed. This is all green cabbage that has tried to go to flower because it just got too hot. This was a fail on my part. The red cabbage doesn't look too bad. These snow peas are beautiful. I'm gonna harvest these and we'll enjoy those. But the cabbage I planted way too late in the season. If I had planted this cabbage and then put some shade cloth over it, it probably would have been just fine. But a couple things. I planted it too late in the season. I think I planted it, I don't know, late June. And this is south facing over here. And it's the black plastic here, the weed barrier. And so it's just way too hot. If I had planted it maybe on the south side of some plants, put shade cloth over it, it would have been okay. But nope, I just needed to fill this bed. It was empty and I didn't know what to fill it with. I went to the store. <laughs> These cabbage plants were on sale because it was not a good time to plant cabbage and they wanted to get rid of it and I bought them and they went to seed so a little bit of a fail there but lesson learned don't plant cabbage that late in the season I'll just let it live here and I will figure out you know what I should do I should probably pull these up and plant more carrots because I really don't have a ton of carrots and carrots are one of our favorite things to grow and eat and this is a great time to plant carrots Mm. these snow peas are so good we might have these for dinner I might saute these up what we really need to eat is probably some zucchini tomorrow I plan today when I was inside with the baby I sat down and I did a bunch of recipe researching and we're gonna make a ton of zucchini recipes tomorrow sweet and savory for the freezer kind of like meal prep freezer meals using zucchini so I'm really I'm looking forward to that tomorrow. Okay, let's go up to the next bed where I do, <laughs> I see some crazy things happening. We were just in this bed. This is the backside. These snow peas are dying. They're done. But over here, there's nothing to harvest, but there is some crazy stuff happening. These are our Atlantic giant pumpkins and they are starting to get giant. I think I'm gonna have to probably put this pumpkin on the ground. This pumpkin is already probably 20 pounds. Now we've got a problem here because this pumpkin is only about this much from the stem. And this pumpkin is resting on the edge of this raised bed. This pumpkin is probably gonna get a couple hundred pounds. I don't know what I should do with this pumpkin because I don't think the edge of this bed is gonna be able to withstand the weight of this pumpkin. I don't know. For now, it's just gonna sit here. We've got another one right here. This is a second plant and we have the same issue here. The pumpkin started growing only about a foot and a half from where the stem is. And so I don't know what I'm gonna do with those long-term. That is good food for thought for next year if I wanna grow this type of pumpkin. I should probably cut off the first fruits and wait until one of the fruits farther down the vine starts growing and let that one grow to be a really large pumpkin. One thing I just learned about this type of pumpkin is you're supposed to bury the vines. So as they grow, you take some of the vines, you bury it and that part of the vine will set roots. I have gravel around my raised bed, so I'm not gonna be able to do that. So this pumpkin is not gonna get as big as its potential just because I don't have the ability to do that. But I never thought I was gonna be able to grow a 2,500 pound pumpkin anyway. So we're just gonna let it go and we will see what we end up doing with it at some point because it's not gonna probably be able to live there its whole life. Now we have one more of them right here. This one here was pollinated or I thought it was but it died, so I need to chuck this into the field. I'll just leave it here for now. And it looks like we've got a sweet meat here that's growing, and these are our banana squash. We pollinated this together right before we left out of town. This one I did not pollinate, but it's growing. And then over here, we have a ton of melons, but I don't see any melons on these vines yet. These pumpkins here in the middle, these were those pumpkins that we started. We pre-germinated them in the Ziploc bag and they're doing fantastic. I don't have anything to harvest anytime soon from this bed, but from this bed, I do. I've got a lot of things to harvest. 
before we left I had noticed that these these are contender green beans this is my labeling system right here I've got contender green beans these have a ton of green beans on them and I'm gonna take a second and I'm going to start harvesting these green beans and that is a weed I do want to get that weed out of here feels absolutely amazing out here in the shade now it's the perfect way to spend the evening is picking green beans we have been harvesting green beans but the only green beans we've been eating this year so far are green beans that we've been eating fresh here i have some cayennes these cayenne plants are the most prolific pepper plant they ripened the fastest they produce the most for me i'm just going to set them right here set some green beans here so we've been able to eat green beans just snacking out in the garden, enjoying them fresh, but none of them have made it into the house to cook with. So I think this is gonna be the first set of green beans that I will be able to make some sort of meal out of. Oh my gosh, there's so many green tomatoes that are huge on these plants in here. You all know that I'm not a huge planner when it comes to my garden. I'm telling you that these tomatoes are getting in the way of my green beans, so I'm gonna trellis them up real quick. But I have been thinking about next year's garden already, and I already have so many ideas. I have ideas of what I like that I've done this year and what's been working and then what's not been working. And I'm really looking forward to next year because I am going to have a plan <laughs> next year, which is kind of crazy. And so that is going to be fun to work on that together. I will go over all that. I want to go over at the end of the season what's worked really well and what didn't work really well and what my plans are for next year. It's going to be fun to actually have a plan because then we're going to be able to see if I can get that plan to come to fruition. Those are the first tomatillos of the year. So we got three of those and this is an absolutely beautiful harvest from just this one bed. I just put the parsley, I can show you, and the thyme. Oh, I don't think I showed you that I harvested a bunch of thyme when I was out there too. And I just harvested all this parsley. This is all just gonna go straight into the freezer. And then when I fill this up, I will go ahead and run the freeze dryer. I already put that basil, no, I put the cilantro in there from earlier today. And now I'm just packaging up this stuff. It is now 8.30. And I'm going to package this stuff up and I'm going to start dealing and processing. Oh, well, my dog's getting a pee. <laughs> my dog really likes these peas. I'm going to start processing them tomorrow. I'm getting a little tired. <laughs> so we've got our sugar snaps, all that zucchini over there. I'm going to start processing that tomorrow. That's a lot. Peppers and tomatoes. I'm probably not going to do the peppers tomorrow. My vacuum sealer did come the one that we ordered when we were together, and it is huge. It is way, way, way bigger than I thought it was, so I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. I don't know, I have to open the box and see. But I'm gonna put all my peppers in one thing. I'll probably do like a pepper processing day and a zucchini processing day, I don't know. I ran out of these green bags. I need to order some more. This is how I like to keep my produce. I, I These were a gift in my P.O. box. Last year, I got one box of them and they're all used right now in the refrigerator. I reuse them. I wash them and reuse them. 
but I'm just gonna grab some Ziploc bags and I'll wash and reuse these as well. My tomatillos, I'm gonna stick with my tomatoes, green beans. I'm only putting the stuff in the fridge that I know needs to go in the fridge or it will start to wilt. My tomatoes will be just fine on the counter. My zucchini will be just fine on the counter and I'm gonna start processing the zucchini tomorrow. I've got a ton of, I think I mentioned, a ton of sweet and savory recipes. We're not just going to turn it into like shredded zucchini. I wanna actually turn it into recipes and turn it into some fun things. So I haven't 100% decided what I'm gonna do. I have about eight recipes printed at my desk over there. That's why I'm not really saying what I'm doing because honestly, I don't really know what I'm doing. Let's see, these peppers are gonna be just fine sitting here. I'm gonna get these ones in the fridge though. So friend, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I am so excited that it is the craziness, the craziness has started. Food preservation is officially here. I mean, it's been here for a while, but being gone for a week and seeing all the abundance that can come in in a short amount of time, it's what makes my heart happy. So thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.